In this example, we have two football players, one M1 with a mass of M1, 95 kilograms, uh, running due east with a speed of 6.5 meters per second. The second player with a mass 110 kilogram runs uh, with a speed of 5.4 meters per second. We denote that speed to be V2I at an angle of 25 degrees north of west. Then player M2 tackles player M1 and we want to find what is the speed immediately after collision. Now in these kinds of collision problems let's uh, just think about this a bit. When two players collide in a football match after a collision they tend to move together. All right? They will immediately after a collision they will be stuck together. So in these kinds of scenarios we have momentum conservation all right because the collision time of the tackle is very small so that the impulse or any external force effects can be neglected okay so whenever that is true that we can ignore net external forces and set them to zero that means that the net impulse which is the product of the any external forces with the time for which the external force acts on our objects this is zero when the net impulse can be ignored we will have momentum conservation and in any kinds of collision momentum is conserved because the external force acts for a very short amount of time or the external force can be neglected any of them can be true so collisions momentum is always conserved Okay, then let's go ahead and solve this. Again, we start off with our axes chosen as such. Then we make two columns. One is before collision, our initial situation, I. The other is after collision. Our final situation F. So initially what did we have? We had M1 running due east in this direction with a speed of V1 initial. Alright? And then we had M2 running north of west in this direction making an angle of 25 degrees with the west all right so this is uh, what we had in our question what is what happened finally in the final the m2 tackled m1 so final situation looks like this the two come together and they move off in a random direction we don't know what this direction is we just uh, choose some direction to um, give it some meaning in our diagram if we if you it doesn't really matter uh, what direction you choose if and only if you keep consistent with your signs all right so the important fact of the matter is after just after a collision the two masses are or the two pairs are combined so the final mass is the combination of the two masses all right now let's apply conservation of momentum and we have seen in previous problems that conservation of momentum will be true in the x and y directions independently. So in the x direction, we will have Pix equal to the final x. In the y direction, likely, likewise, we'll have P final x equal to P initial x. Let's go ahead and make up, write up these equations. Before we can write it out, we have to realize that uh, the initial velocity of mass 2 was at an angle to our chosen axis. So first of all, we have to find the components. Like always, we, have, we can find V2 initial x and V2 initial y. And they are directed as follows. Right, and since we know the magnitude of V2i, which is just 5.4 meters per second, and we know the 
uh, we know the angle north of west so we can write v2 initial x is it's directed in the negative direction so let's just include the negative here negative 5.4 cosine 25 what is v2 i y it is directed in the positive y direction so positive 5.4 sine 25 there you go we have the velocities now let's just consider our x component in the x direction what was our initial momentum m1 v1 i x plus m2 v2 i x this would be equal to m1 plus m2 because in the final scenario the masses are combined so m1 plus m so the final momentum would be m1 plus m2 times the final x component of velocity all right so what do we have to write here m1 is 95 kilograms times v1 i x was 6.5 in the positive x direction m2 was 110 v2 i x we just wrote down up above negative 5.4 cosine 25 and that is equal to the summation of the masses so 95 plus 110 times the x component of the final velocity so we have only one unknown so we can go ahead and solve this equation pretty easily divide both sides by whatever 95 plus 110 is so that the contribution cancels out here and this side we'll have an overall division by 95 plus 110 kilograms if you do this calculation we end up with the x component of the final velocity to be 0.386 meters per second okay similarly for the y momentum we will just do the same thing but now com considering all the y components so what are the y components of momentum we have m1 v1 y v1 i y or whatever the initial uh, y velocity of player one plus m2 times v2 i in the y direction equal to the combined masses m1 plus m2 times the final y component v final y we see that player one was initially just moving in the x direction so it didn't have any y component of velocity so that means it didn't have any y component of momentum then we are left with 110 the mass of player 2 times its initial y velocity which is 5.4 sine 25 degrees that is equal to 95 plus 110 times the final y velocity divide both sides by 95 plus 110 and you end up with vfy is 1.23 meters per second all right so that's the y component of the final velocity then it is just pretty simple to notice that both x and y velocities are positive so vfx will look like this vfy would look like that oops sorry uh, vfx would look like this vfy would look like that and they will form a complete uh, hypotenuse or a complete velocity or speed whatever you call it the magnitude of that velocity the final velocity is what you're actually looking for which can be easily found using 
Pythagoras theorem. Thank you, Pythagoras. Vfx squared plus Vfy squared. You just calculated Vfx and Vf Vfy, so this just comes out to be 1.29 meters per second. That's how we implement our conservation of momentum to find final velocities of two things sticking together after collision. Alright?